Hello everyone and welcome back to NTE. Right, there has been a request recently to go through um, the May-June paper for 2016. Right, so basically to look at Maths Paper 1, 2016 and look at question number 5 and question number 6. Right, so I've just gone through question number 5 in the previous video. I'm now going to look at question number 6. All right, so question six is financial maths, right? It then says, how long, right? So how long talks to time, which means in financial maths, we're talking about the value of M, right? So how long would the price of an asset take to reduce by, right? Reduce by, which means subtract. It's very important for us to um, be able to convert between the mathematical language or sorry the English language to mathematical language right so reduce by means subtract and it's by ne? a third of its original value if it depreciates right on a reducing balance at a rate of 4.7 percent compounded annually right Okay, so we should also be able to remember all our formulas, but if you don't, at the end of this question paper, there is formula um, sheet. Okay, so you just need to understand your way around the formula sheet. If we are looking at depreciation, we're always looking at these formulas with a minus sign in them, and if it's reducing balance, then it's this formula here in exponential form. So this one is reducing balance. I think the other one is called straight line or something like that if I remember correctly uh, but basically if they don't say something along the lines of reducing balance then it's obviously this other formula or you need to know that we need these minus signs right in order to look at depreciation. All right so going back to our question let's now see how are we going to answer it. Okay, so question 6.1, we have that 4,7% um, per annum, right? So that's the rate of depreciation. We also have that A is equal to P uh, into 1 minus I to the exponent of N, right? And we're told that this item right has an original value let's assume it has an original value of p right that p value over there and then it says that it's reduced by right so after some time the accumulated amount right has to be something okay right so let's see if this is the accumulated amount it's to equal the original value then we reduce by right so we subtract a third right of the original value right so we want to subtract one third the original value so which means that eventually this a value is going to be uh, two thirds of this p value right remember this one over here is three over three and then three minus one is two over three right so this a value here is going to be two over three p is equal to p into 1 minus, right, now remember, the interest we never substitute in as a percentage, we always substitute it in as a decimal, right, so that's going to mean moving two units to the left, right, so that's going to give you 0, 0.047, and it's per annum, so it's divided by 1, and also the exponent is going to be times 1 and we were looking for how long so it's this n times 1 or simply just the n okay all right so we're looking for this value of n remember that whenever we need to solve for an exponent and remembering also that this is a grade 12 paper We've already learned about other logarithms in grade 12, and that's how we solve for an exponent. And that's usually why we learn about logs, um, simply just to calculate this value of n in financial maths. 
right? <clears throat> okay, so we can divide both sides here by p to give us 2 over 3 is equals to 1 minus 0, 0, 0.047. All of this to the exponent of n. Right, now all that we need to do to get to this value of n is just to apply our log definition. Right, remember the definition of the logarithm is just the exponent, right? It helps us to pull down an unknown exponent. So we say that if a to some exponent b is equal to c, then it means log base a, right? Remember the base always stays the same whether it is in the exponent or in the log, right? So now it means that the log of the base a of c is equal to b, right? So over here we're going to say therefore that exponent basically, when you want to now move into calculating this exponent, the exponent of n is equal to log of this base. Right, so the base always remains the base, right, of 2 over 3 is then going to be the value of n, right, and obviously we need a calculator uh, to get to that number. Okay, so we're going to insert into our logarithmic function, and we're going to choose this one where we can insert both the base and the inputs, right, so it's going to be 1 minus 0, 0, 0, 0.047. And over here we have the fraction 2 of 3. Okay, and that tells us 8.4225, right? So n is equal to 8,423, roundabout, so approximately. And remember that this interest was per annum, and the question was if we just quickly go back to the question. It asked you how long would the price, right? So how long is per annum means that I'm looking at years. So to answer here, we're going to say it's going to take eight years. All right, so therefore, after eight years. Okay. 2021. What did they say is going to happen on the 1st of April? They said that she's going to replace it, right? So in other words, we need to calculate the decreased amount, right? So the book value is going to be the current value, x, right, that it is, and then it's going to depreciate at 20%. So it's going to be 1 minus... 0, 0,2, right, and that is annually, so that's going to be over 5 years, so it is n is equal to 5, okay. Right, and they said we need to give our value um, to 5 decimal places, and I'm guessing they're talking about this bracket over here, so 1 minus 0, 0,2 to the exponent of 5, <clears throat> One, two, three, four, five decimal places. Okay, so that is zero comma three two seven six eight. Right, so zero comma three two seven six eight x. Right, so that will be the book value of the current tractor. Remember, current tractor is going to decrease in value. Right. Okay, 6.2.2, determine in terms of x what the price right, of a similar new tractor will be on the 1st of April. Right? So remember that she said that she's going to trade in her current tractor on the 1st of April, so we need to know exactly how much is going to be a similar tractor on that day when she replaces it. Okay. Alright, so even though they don't say this explicitly, things in the real world never increase in a linear fashion. They always increase exponentially. So we can write here price of new tractor. It's going to be the value, right, 
of the current tractor increased right at 18%. So 1 plus 0, 0,18 and it's going to do that for an entire 5 years. Again, they say we need to give our answers correct to five decimal places, so we need to pull up our calculator again. Alright, so this time, let's see, five decimal places. Um, let me see the mode. Okay, I can't fix it. That's fine. So, one, two, three, four, five means that this needs to round up to a six. So it's two eight seven seven six right so two comma two eight seven seven six x all right next question question six point three this is calculate the amount accumulated in the sinking fund on the 1st of April. Right. She made her first deposits into this fund from the 30th of April, so at the end of the month, right, when she bought the tractor, and she continues to do so until the end of the month on the 30th of March 2021. Right. So we need to uh, figure out how many payments of 8,000 rand does she do because remember now this question is a future value question so we need to look at the future value and this is x into 1 plus i and this n over here is number of payments or deposits minus 1 all of this divided by i okay so we need to substitute into this formula we just need to figure out how many um, deposits does she make Alright, so this is where it can be useful to draw up a number line for ourselves, right? So what I've done here is that they said she made her first deposit at the end of April. So this is April 2016, right? So it's April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. That's the end of 2016. Then she's going to make deposits end of the month, every month, uh, 2017. So that's going to be 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020. So that's four years. Gives us four times 12, which is going to be 48 payments, right? And then to that 48 payments, we add these other months. So I suppose one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then after 2020, it's going to be end of January, end of February, end of March 2021. Okay, so um, that's six. No, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Twelve more payments are going to be made. So that gives us 60 payments, or what we actually should call deposits in this case. Okay. All right, so then substituting into our formula, to answer this question, we have that she's depositing into this account 8,000 Rand, right? And this account, the sinking fund, is earning 10% interest monthly compounded monthly and she's making 60 deposits we just determined that now then we need to subtract one all of this divided by the interest okay again the calculator needs to come to our rescue right so plugging all of this into the calculator we get that our final answer is um, 690,496 rand. Okay, right, so sorry, don't forget to put the R right in your final answer. So it was 619,496 um, 
as you see, we usually run this up to two decimal places, so it's 0.58, okay, comma, 58, okay. All right, then the last question, question 6.2.4, says calculate the value of X, right, let's see, X, remember, was the price of the tractor when it was um, purchased, right, Okay, the price of the current tractor, round off your answer to the nearest thousand. Right, so let's see. Um, understand how a sinking fund works. Basically, sinking fund is just the name that is given to the account that you open, right, to plan for the future. Basically, what you do is you say, okay, this asset, right, whatever it is, costs me a certain amount to purchase it now. As I use it, it decreases in value. So if I want to replace it after some time, right, I then have to have some money, all right, to top up, right, when you do a trade-in, okay. So basically, the price of the new asset, so in other words, in this case, the price of the new tractor, right, you're going to go there, you're going to see, okay, the new tractor costs this certain amount, right, you're going to trade in your old tractor, which means you're going to take the new price minus your depreciated price. And the difference, hopefully, if you did your calculations correctly, should be covered by the amount in your sinking fund, right? So that is the calculation that we want to do, right? Right, now to calculate our X value, we can see it's a common factor. We can then take it out. Right, so then all we're going to do now to calculate the value of x is to divide both sides by this bracket. Right, so if we plug all of this into the calculator, this is what we get. They also asked us to round up to the nearest thousand. Okay, so the nearest thousand means we need to round up the six, but we can't because that is a zero. So, which means the final answer here is 316,000. Okay. All right, so that was then question number six from May, June 2016. Um, I hope you learned something, and I will see you guys next time.